Good afternoon to everybody. Ladies and gentlemen, I am very happy to welcome you for this uh, 28th edition of uh, our Paris Europlus uh, International Financial Forum. A little bit sad not to have the opportunity to welcome you in person. Um, we are 100 people here with uh, tables, but unfortunately no place for this uh, post-COVID meeting. Uh, and we are more than 1,000 people uh, all around the world by web. And I greet all our friends from uh, Europe, from the United States, from China, from Japan, uh, who are participating today. Uh, we have um, a quite busy uh, schedule with uh, four major topics. Uh, first, the European economic recovery and the acceleration of the rebound. Uh, second, the dynamic uh, in Paris, the dynamic of the Paris Financial Center thanks to the reforms which have been implemented since the election of uh, Emmanuel Macron, uh, and the internationalization of the Paris Financial Center today in the context of the Brexit and the implementation of uh, big new international market players. Third, the acceleration of uh, sustainable finance. We will uh, discuss uh, our recommendations to the COP26, to, on the road to Glasgow, on this uh, essential issue of sustainable finance. And last but not least, uh, the acceleration of uh, the new technologies and the fintech in Paris and in Europe. I would like uh, to uh, introduce uh, Augustin Romanet just before um, a practical issue concerning uh, the access to your platform you have the possibility to access to all the documents which have been recently published by Paris Europlace and more essentially today is a new report that uh, we have uh, presented a few minutes ago to the press uh, concerning the, the choice of Paris by international issuers uh, for IPOs, SPACs and the uh, implementation of headquarters and uh, Paris once again has uh, strong dynamic to develop uh, IPOs this year after uh, last year, which was a little bit more quiet. And uh, I would like also to thank uh, all our sponsors, uh, Amundi, BNP Paribas, Emergence, Euronext, Group ADP, HSBC, Kiriba, La Banque Postale, and Société Générale. Thanks to you. Augustin, Mr. Chairman, the floor is yours to open our day. Thank you. Thank you, Arnaud. So, Madam European Commissioner, who is on the web, Mr. Minister, ladies and gentlemen, dear friends, welcome in Paris. It's quite an important day for Paris, as far as uh, this morning, President of the Republic, Emmanuel Macron, did inaugurate a JP Morgan new market room, and he did a vibrant speech in front of Jimmy Dimon and Kirill Courbouin to promote sustainable finance and dynamic finance, which is at the service of population. And uh, this uh, arrival of many people, f more, more than 400, from London to, to Paris for JP Morgan, is the result of many years of efforts many people have done, and uh, among them Europlus teams, and I would like to, to thank them. Thank for that for everybody in the room who cooperate to attract these talents to Paris. Then I would like to warmly thank all the participants. There are over 1,000 of you all over the world. Some are here in Paris and some uh, outside by the web. I would like to thank Bruno Le Maire, the French Minister of the Economy, Finance and the Recovery, Madame Mered McGuinness, the European Commissioner for Financial Services, Financial Stability and the Capital Markets Union, 
and François Villeroy de Gallo, the governor of the Banque de France, and all the honorable speakers we shall be hearing this afternoon. Among them, my vice chairman, the vice chairman of Paris Europlace, Jean Lemire, I salute. So I wish to convey two key messages today. First of all, it's essential to fortify European cooperation. In facing up to the health crisis, Europe has shown great resilience by rolling out unique economic policy measures. And in particular, I wish to pay a tribute to the architects of the recovery plan bolstered by common debt, an exceptional step forward indeed. Some consider that it has been a Hamiltonian moment. The future will tell us if it is the truth. The finance industry has played its part in supporting the economy. Owing to the measures it has developed, Europe will boast sharp economic acceleration, both this year and next year, which should drive growth on all continents and offer many opportunities to investors. In this context, the implementation of the capital market union must speed up. It is more important than ever. It's a prerequisite to efficiently and quickly supporting the recovery. Secondly, the Paris Financial Center is entering a new exciting phase with the acceleration of its 2030 strategy, the development of new businesses by international players who have chosen France to make their post-Brexit move, and the very sharp ramp up of IPOs and new stock issues is a testimony. Paris has been increasing its attractiveness for investors by capitalizing on two key strengths, which have been internationally recognized for several years. First, fintechs, then the development of sustainable finance. The European rebound we are experiencing, the vitality of which is, that is demonstrated in concrete terms by clients, is by no means the result of per chance. In order to mitigate the human, economic, and social toll of the health crisis, all the regions of the world have taken unprecedented tax and monetary measures. I'm sure that Bruno Le Maire shall give you some detailed insights and the support afforded by public policy to the acceleration of economic recovery is not likely to go, to go away overnight. OECD forecasts that the global fiscal deficit will exceed 10% of GDP in 2021, slightly down from 2020, while bond yields are expected to remain low for still some time ahead. This means the rebound may well speed up even more. That is why it's essential to sustain the reforms that were recently implemented in France and elsewhere in order to increase the resilience of the economy. They have dampened the shocks of the crisis and they are shaping a better future. Moreover, it's important to underscore the fact that the finance industry has been a driving force in supporting the Main Street economy and helping investments resume while pre preserving human capital and jobs in companies. In and outside Europe, regulations must, must more than ever contribute to sustaining the competitiveness of the finance industry. A level playing field is indispensable as I'm sure Commissioner McGuinness will probably explain in a few, few minutes. In particular, the Paris Financial Center shall see to it that the rules of the game are internationally harmonized between jurisdictions in order to establish sound and fair competition for banks, insurance companies, and financial markets. In view of supporting the recovery of European growth, we therefore call for a faster implementation of the capital markets union on the following priorities which, which we have recently set out 
in the French it, it, Italian dialogue. I will summarize these six priorities. The first one is to defend the competitiveness of the EU, European Union's financial markets and banks in keeping with the transposition of Basel III. The second one is to facilitate long-term investments, particularly with respect to the review of the Solvency II Directive. Third, effectively support long-term savings by channeling them towards cooperation with LTF-like incentives. Four, reinforce the capital structure of corporations by reviewing MIFID II and facilitating the dissemination of research on listed companies and SMEs. Fifth, develop well-controlled securitization for banks and insurance companies, which you know is essential for the long-term financing of the economy. And sixth, and when it comes to sustainable finance, harmonize the goals of taxonomy through global coordination in Europe. My second and last message has to do with the need to bolster economic re recovery by making the most of the two drivers which we consider as essential in the strategy of the Paris Market Plus, fintechs and sustainable finance. Many people today are wondering whether we are entering a phase of secular stagnation. In order to avert this risk, we must, we must cast our efforts on innovation and productivity, which are essential relays. They must pick up where capital and labor, labor live off. Well before the former crisis of 2000, 2008 and 2009, the Paris marketplace spared no effort to welcome French and foreign fintechs and to help them thrive. In 2008, Paris Europlace created Finance Innovation, chaired by Bernard Guénier. It was the first initiative to identify and support French fintechs. At present, and in the wake of the reforms that have encouraged entrepreneurship on alleviated taxes, Paris offers with French tech a widely recognized know-how on a breeding ground for entrepreneurs. We do hope they will eventually give rise to large and global corporations. The Paris Financial Centers offers international investors a critical mass of reputable global players and operators in every field of the finance industry. While Trading platforms and investment funds have set up their business in Paris. The number of IPOs has been increasing dramatically. The first European corporate SPAC was listed in Paris earlier this month. And the liquidity of the Paris marketplace is incre increasingly recognized. All this clearly demonstrates that our strategy has been rewarding not to mention the fact that French private individuals have been investing in technology stocks with greater and greater enthusiasm. Further move des designed to make Paris even more attractive for IPOs, such as the development of equity in the context of growing debt, especially for fast-growing corporate. So this further move will be described in detail by Xavier Gir, who chairs the Corporate Issuers Committee of Paris Europlace. The second priority is sustainable finance, based on the fact that the Paris Financial Center has been held in particularly high esteem since the Paris Agreement of 2015. Paris Europlace launched Climate, Climate Finance Day in 2015 as COP21 was being held in Paris. It also launched Finance for Tomorrow in 2017, chaired by Thierry Deo, who will speak in a later session to explain what is being done to accelerate the actions of the Paris marketplace in this field, 
In addition to the work undertaken by our investor and corporate issuers committees to hold deeper exchanges in this area and produce precise and consensual proposals, including quite a few related to European taxonomy. The Paris Financial Center is also a leader when it comes to green bonds, with over $30 billion issued in 2020, the fourth year in a row in a leadership position. Furthermore, the first sustainability-linked bonds were listed in Paris last month. And finally, Paris is the only financial center in the world that has created an observatory that examines the commitments made by each and every organization to move away from fossil energy. This is also done by Finance for Tomorrow. On the whole, environmental, social, and governance criteria call for a stronger dialogue, which we are developing amongst investors and issuers in order to help set up the transition that is absolutely necessary in order to achieve the goals of carbon neutrality in 2050. We have ongoing relations with the authorities, particularly the European authorities, to ensure that the taxonomy does not merely consist in banning certain activities, but that it recognizes the indispensable principle of transition in order to support investors and help countries and their corporations pursue and achieve their carbon neutrality ambitions. Professor Christian Gaulier, the rapporteur of the report with, which have just been done for the, on the reorientation of capitalism by Jean Tirole, the Nobel winning pri uh, prize economist on Olivier Blanchard, the former chief economist of IMF. Christian Gaulier will describe this afternoon the challenges that lie ahead and the measures that must be taken to put finance at the service of a sustainable economy. These discussions will take place at the Climate Finance Day also that Paris Europlace will hold on October the 26th this year. Of course, you are more welcome to attend. To conclude, I would say that once again, the current recovery, which offers a myriad of opportunities for the finance industry, as it supports businesses and the economy, also requires that investors demonstrate a great deal of lucidity and coordination. Many technological and environmental challenges have yet to be addressed. And the best way to achieve these challenges is to fortify exchanges between countries. That is precisely what the Paris Financial Center shall continue to offer and facilitate in the interest of corporations, the authorities, and all the stakeholders. Thank you very much for your attention, and I wish you a very good afternoon. Thank you.